Good afternoon. My camera's slightly tilted and it bugs me. <laughs> I'll work on that. Uh, welcome, thanks for joining my broadcast. Welcome to my afternoon live stream broadcast. That's what I was trying to say. Um, for those who don't know me, if you're here for the first time, I uh, can introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby, and I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And um, I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. This is number 320. And I'm going to get into a little bit of the murky stuff called codependence. Um, making sure that my camera is bright enough. Okay, it's good. So I'm, I'm titling this one. This is number 320, by the way, my ongoing series of daily talks. Um, why do you ignore you? And this is the trap or the pain of codependence, and I'm going to offer some cures. Um, this is inspired by some recent conversations, as most of my talks usually are. And this one, I hope, will be of assistance to many people out there. And let me just say that I have been there before, so I do know from where I speak in this one in particular. And I'll tell you about a book at the end that I recommend highly besides my own book that I think is probably the best book written about codependence. So let's get into this slightly, shall we? Why do you ignore you? Sounds like a very trite statement, doesn't have any value. Well, I disagree. <laughs> in the area of romance and love and relationships, many people, surprisingly many people, are more concerned about the other person's well-being, the other person's response, the other person's reactions to what you, we do, than we are about our own well-being reactions and decisions. And this is probably one of the most clearest ways I can define codependence, which is this paradigm where your own fulfillment, <coughs> excuse me, the after effects, the allergies are still hitting me, our own sense of fulfillment is predicated upon somebody else's actions or inactions, not from our own self-support. And that's, by the way, the clue to what the solution is. But I'll get to that in a minute. If you're like most of the people I know, we care. It's kind of the way it's part of our makeup, part of our way of being. The challenge, though, is where do we draw the line and have our boundaries? And in relationship, it's the temptation to have any boundaries. You want to be fully immersed and fully embracing and fully in love with the other person. And for some people, that includes the conversation that if I love this person this much, I should therefore make sure they're taken care of before myself, which is, it sounds romantic, but it's very ineffective. Um, to use the, the model they use on airplanes, about the, this is the typical one, when the oxygen mask drops down, they say, if you were the child, put your own one on first before you put the one on your child, because if you put it on your child first, you might not be around to sustain after that, because they don't have oxygen. It sounds pretty dramatic, but in relationship, it isn't much different, except it takes longer. For example... If you're in the place where you're hoping to be loved by the other person, and so you keep loving them, loving them, loving them, and loving them, at some point in time, and it might be three months, it might be 30 years, you'll feel so drained and worn out, you won't be able to express anymore, and you'll have nothing left for yourself. It's an extremely unhealthy way to be. Codependence is, is a debilitating disease, perhaps, an extreme way of putting it. But it is a challenge for a lot of people, because... We're wired to think that love is something that we must give beyond and above, above for our partnership, and our partner comes first, even before ourselves. And yes, I did that more than once when I was younger, so I do know the pain of that. The piece of this that I want to make sure you get this point, because it is a big piece, is that if your valuing of yourself, your self-worth, your self-value comes from what the other person does or doesn't do in relationship. They have control over you, because depending how they act or don't act, you'll feel good or not, which means that you are a victim of their control. Is that sharp enough for you? You are a victim of their control. So if they are absolutely excited to be around you because you love them so much, then that's great. But if they don't, you feel upset. And the reality is, they, if they're a control person or a, what's the one looking for, a toxic controller, which is some a new term, then they know they have you at, twist around their little finger. 
sorry, their little finger, <laughs> which handles you for which. So basically your action, reaction, feeling, and response is all controlled by them. And that little finger you're, you're curled around. This is how codependence works. Just to make sure you get this feeling and this like discomfort, hopefully. This trap that so many of us fall into. One, because we've been told by love songs and over the last 60, 70 years and so many other places that to love somebody else means you've got to give everything. That and You're not whole till you meet somebody else. That you will die without them. That you make, you know, you, you, they make you feel whole, complete, everything else. It's bullshit. So to be clear. First of all, none of us, <coughs> excuse me, none of us are incomplete. So when someone says you complete them, they're lying to you. <laughs> and if you tell them that they complete you, you're lying to them. Are we clear? I'll make sure they point really crystal clear. Who you are, what you express is fully, completely yours. And the solution I've been sort of hinting at through the whole thing, which is how to fix this, really comes back to one simple thing. It's turning all that energy out there inward. Now, one caveat I'm going to put in here before I get to the end of this. When you are willing to love yourself so much that you don't need that other person, that's when the fun begins. When you love yourself enough so that you're whole and you're feeling full, one the other person can then only add to what you already are, not replace something you think's missing. Secondly, you can love them from your overflow, from your abundance. It doesn't drain you because you're filling yourself up all the time from your own self-love. It's an interesting paradigm that shift that happens when you do that. Third, there's no victimhood here. Because ideally, when you're doing that for yourself, so is your partner. And when you and your partner are both doing the place where you fill yourself up first, and you love yourselves enough so you can then love the other person from the overflow, your relationship blossoms and grows. And the people who do that, I know from friends of mine I've talked to who've done that, from my, my experience of that too, the relationship becomes so much more than just two people. It becomes um, an impact on the world. It reaches far beyond. Family, friends, business, everything else gets positively, positively affected by that love that expands beyond the two of you because you are now full and adding from your overflow. So instead of coming from this 50-50 half-hearted experience, you come from a place of wholeness and fullness and expression. That is the power of doing this work. I mentioned a book, which I will get to. One of my favorite books, one of the best books I can talk about, that really helps people who are, traveling, who are struggling with it or understand codependence, is a book by two friends of mine who, who are powerful teachers I respect deeply, are Gay and Katie Hendricks. And the book is called Conscious Loving. It's been out 20... Oof, at least 20 years now, probably 30 years by now. It's probably the best book, Again, Conscious Loving by Gay and Katie Hendricks, or Gay and Kathleen Hendricks. Best book I know on codependence. I do actually mention that book in my book, so if you want to get my book, which is called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is 50 Principles of Healthy Relationships, you can get that from my website, and I'll get to that in a second. But Conscious Loving is one of my favorite books, one of my most highly recommended books for anybody who is dealing with the throes, the challenges, the temptations of codependence. I hope that this talk has helped you with some of that too because that's kind of part of my mission now more and more to help people wake up to their own self-support, their own self-love, their own self-respect so they're no longer dependent upon somebody else to feel that way. And then when they're full, they can give from the overflow. And that, to me, is the best place to be for a healthy relationship. And if you're not doing that, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you're not doing that, I highly recommend you get some support to get that. And I can offer my support for that too if that's something you're looking for. So to give you more information about my book and a few other things to summarize in this broadcast, my website is my name, which is barryselby.com. And on that website, you find a whole bunch of stuff, including my book, which is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. And you click on the book um, in the navigation to choose it. You also sign up for a complimentary clarity conversation with me as my gift to you, which if you're a single, especially if you're looking for love and not having what you want, that'll help you get some clarity. That's why it's called a complimentary clarity conversation. If you go to my Let's Chat button on my website, you can find me there. All these broadcasts live on my website, although it's a very crowded, crowded page now because there's 300, and this one will be 320 of them all on that one page, which is a lot of broadcasts. You can more easily see them right now, just to be clear, on my business page, which is um, Barry Selby, the author on Facebook, or on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, the playlist is Message with the Masculine. So I'm reading the message here. Karen, you are so right. Codependency is akin to imprisonment. Yes, I believe self-love is always the solution. It is. 
from from this boundary settings become more natural something i've struggled with all my life well you're not the only one just not always as easy as it, as it sounds true and you're welcome I'm glad i'm glad you liked it. it it is it is a journey there's no it isn't there's no instant there's no instant on switch there's a slowly moving on switch if you practice and oh homework <laughs> i always give I, I almost almost always give homework and this is how I just gave my client a little bit earlier, so I'll give it to you as well. And I've given it so many times, you've probably heard it from me if you've seen my broadcasts. One of the keys to stopping the, the um, what did you call it, the imprisonment, good word, for codependency, is to spend time looking in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. As strange as that sounds, but actually it's the solution. Because the more you open up to your own love, and the best way to do it is either to put your hands over your heart, or better yet, look in the mirror into your own eyes and say, I love you to yourself, and feel it. If you do that for five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening, and do that every day for 30 days, you will blow up that sense of code, that codependency um, habit will be destroyed. Of course, if you do that once you're in a relationship, it's even better because then you'll even verify if you're clear or not. But that's another story. But try that on for size as a homework assignment. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, looking in the mirror in your own eyes and saying out loud to yourself, do you feel it? I love you. So you actually hear it and get it back inside yourself. And if you want to put hands over your heart, you can do that too, to just connect to it. And that will be a great one. Yes, you're welcome, Karen. Um, I think that's everything I've covered. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. And if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. This will be living on YouTube as well as on Facebook. And I'm starting to put some of these on Instagram, like one-minute clips. I'm still figuring out how to do that. It's a new thing for me to try that paradigm to play in. I might even do some Instagram stories. Apparently, it's a new thing to do. But, you know, it's what the hipsters are doing. <laughs> But thank you for joining me here. And any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another topic, which will be number 321. And who knows what that will be. Okay, take care. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.